हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू इन्फॉर्मेटिका सपोर्ट वीडियोस दिस इज श्रुति फ्रॉम इन्फॉर्मेटिका जीसीएस एंड थ्रू दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग वर्क फ्लोज इन एक्सोन सो बिफोर प्रोसीड फर्दर लेट सी द एजेंडा फॉर दिस वीडियो सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द यूज केस ऑफ वर्क फ्लो इन एक्सोन देर आफ्टर वी विल सी द बेसिक कंपोनेंट ऑफ अ वर्क फ्लो एंड देन वी विल सी हाउ टू क्रिएट अ वर्क फ्लो इन एक्सोन then in part 2 of this video we will see how to execute a workflow in axon so let's begin with our first topic that is the use or the need of workflow in axon so as referred by its name workflow defines complete flow of executable steps that are required to complete a particular task it not only defines what all steps are required to complete a task but it also defines which user or a group of users are responsible for a particular task then accordingly users also get notifications so for example if a task is pending on a particular user he will get notifications like one task is pending on you we will discuss about this in detail in the second part of the video where we will discuss regarding the execution of work so let's uh, go to our next topic that is the basic components of a workflow so let's navigate to our axon ui so this is our axon ui and i have opened a data set named legal entity record so suppose if i want to do some changes regarding this particular data set so first step is i have to define a workflow here so that that workflow can define the uh, executable steps flow or the sequence of one by one steps that we should perform in order to complete or in order to execute that change so uh, the first step is to create a workflow and then to execute that workflow so let's start with our first step for that we need to navigate to the edit mode and thereafter we have to navigate to workflow tab so this particular option workflow if i have already created one or more workflows for this particular object legal entity record then it might have shown us two options that is either to choose the existing workflow or to add a new workflow but as i haven't added any workflow for this particular object so it is showing us only one option that is to add a new workflow thereafter we can provide here the name for workflow so let's say it's test for video and this name should be of at least six characters thereafter here we have to define the description so uh, here we can design our workflow before designing let's see the basic components of a workflow so this is a particular swim lane this data owner this one is a swim lane then data steward is a separate swim lane and so on so this number of swim lanes depends on the total number of rows that are present for a particular facet so currently we have opened a object of type data set so uh, how many uh, whatever number of rows are present there currently in my instance for data set accordingly we will see the number of swim lanes here so for example if my instance has five rows defined for data set so i will see here five swim lanes by default and each one corresponds to a particular row and that row name we can see from here so this swim lane corresponds to the role data owner this swim lane corresponds to the role data steward so now suppose i will create a new role for data set so thereafter whenever i will open a workflow then it will by default show us six swim lanes each corresponding to a particular role now before proceeding further let's go to the stakeholder tab so i have assigned this role data owner to john admin data steward to martin hess now again going back to the workflow so what is the significance of a swim lane so whatever task i will design in this swim lane that are that should be executed by the person or the stakeholder which has this particular role so suppose 
I have defined some task in this simulate data owner and as for this object data owner is John admin then he will be responsible for executing all the tasks whatever I will define here. So before uh, creating a workflow just think of what all swim lanes you want to use and then make sure that whatever swim lanes you are going to use you have defined a stakeholders for those roles. So if I want to use these two swim lanes, data owner and data steward, then I have to make sure that I have assigned these role data owner and data steward for to some users. Means for this particular object, legal entity record, I should assign these two roles, data owner and data steward to some particular user because then only he can be responsible for executing the task assigned in the concerned swim lane. So now let's uh, begin with the ex uh, creation of workflow. So before that we will see the meaning of symbols. So this is to start the workflow. This is to stop the workflow. This is decision box and this comes into picture if a user has two options available and he will choose one path. So there are two execution path and user has to decide which execution path he has to opt. And this is the user task. So just to define any task, we will use this. So now consider a simple example. I just want to change the name for this particular data set or I just wanted to change something regarding this particular data set object. So suppose if someone has shared the suggestion so first I will check if that suggestion is correct or not. If it is correct, then we have to execute that suggestions. And if it is not correct, then we will stop the workflow. So I have just used this start workflow option here. Then I will create a user task. So let's say if Suggestion. suggestion is correct. Thereafter, the user will have two paths of execution. Means there are two possible paths. Either the suggestion is correct or it is incorrect. So in such scenarios, we have to use decision box or the exclusive gateway. So it is a prerequisite for using a gateway that or a decision box that it should be preceded by a user task because a user task only can uh, opt up one of the possible path depending on the question which has been defined for that particular user task. So I have defined here a question that to check if suggestion is correct or not, then only he will be able to def define or he will be able to opt one of the possible paths and those two possible paths we have to show using this decision box. So let's say one of the path is end and this decision box should always have two outlets or two possible paths. It should not be more than two and it should not be less than two. It should be exactly two. So one of the path is this one and I have to label this path. It is mandatory to label this path. So suppose uh, suggestion is not correct. So I will just stop my workflow. Now in case my suggestions are correct, then I want that this particular user should execute that particular suggestion. And once the suggestion is executed, then it should stop it. So now, if you will just click on a user task, you can see here option of due date. So if I will select it at three days, and as it is, this particular task is under the data owner swim lane, and we have defined John admin as the data owner for this particular data set object. So John admin has to complete this task within three days. And suppose for execution, I will give six days. And for this swim lane, we have defined Martin as the data steward. So Martin has to execute this task within six days. So now let's say someone has submitted a suggestion. 
So first, John Admin has to decide whether that suggestion is correct or not. Then based on his decision, he can use one of the paths. Here I have missed to provide the name for this path. So this is yes. So if it is correct, then uh, he has to pass control to uh, Martin. He has to inform Martin and then Martin has to execute the suggestion. But if the suggestions are not valid or it is incorrect, then it John admin even can directly stop the workflow. Now suppose uh, the suggestions were correct, then we have just come after completing the suggestion means once the Martin will execute this task again it will come to the stop means thereafter the workflow is completed. So after defining the workflow we just have to save it. So our workflow has been saved. So this is how we create a workflow. Now to just to see the how to execute this particular workflow. So for that, please refer to the second part of this video. If you have any queries or any suggestions or feedbacks regarding this video, please contact us using these links. Thank you for watching the video.